Well, good evening, everyone. It's that time of the month for our uh, first week of the month, uh, monthly board meeting for the Delta Amateur Radio Club. Uh, if I could just real quick, uh, we'll get kicked off uh, with uh, Perry. If you just give us a roll call quick, make sure we got a quorum and then we'll get jump. We'll jump right in. Absolutely. President Joe Plunk. Here. Vice President Tyler Henley. Present. Secretary Perry Hayes here. Treasurer Jim Martin. I am here. Director of Training Joe Lowenthal. Here. Director of Programs John Reiners. Here. <laughs> Director of Meetings and Special Events Scott Adams. Here. Director of Publications Mike Harrison. Present. Repeater Trustee Dan Fleek. Here. PIO Adam White. I see Adam's name. I think he's muted. Here. All right. Thank you, Adam. Yep. And immediate past president, Ty McMahon. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, just real quick. I'm looking forward to just as a kind of an opening statement. We're looking forward to our October meeting. Uh, it's that time of year where we have our election nominations. And Perry, thank you for serving as the, the chair of that and the members that are helping you. Very much appreciate that. Uh, very much want to make sure that we take an opportunity for the members that are there at our meeting to interact with them and, and kind of get some roundtables. I uh, want to also throw out to the board potentially looking at the November meeting, which is kind of our uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but to just kind of think about kind of having a, a membership roundtable a little bit in conjunction with the prizes that we do at the November meeting. I don't know if that's ever been done in the past, but we'll just kind of see if we can elicit some um, feedback from our membership and some insight as to where they might want to do it, what they might want to do with the club. If I could just ask everybody to kind of think about that, that would be fantastic, and then we'll go forward with that. All right, with that, we'll move into any uh, minutes or approval of minutes or edits that we might need to do right quick. Perry? Thank you, Joe. Uh, the, the minutes of last month's Board of Directors meeting were circulated by email. I did make corrections that were suggested by the members of the board. There, was, uh, cor there were corrections made, and those were sent for publication in Sparks, and they were approved at the last membership meeting. I prepared the minutes of last month's membership meeting, circulated them this week uh, by email, got some suggestions on it, some additions and corrections on those, and sent out a corrected copy uh, to the board via email. So... I would just ask if there were would be a motion in a second to approve those minutes. So move to accept those minutes. I'll second. I'll second. All right. So the motion made by right. Joe Lowenthal uh, and seconded by Tyler to approve those minutes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. That motion to approve those minutes passes. Thank you, Perry. Next. Thank you, Joe. All right. Um, we'll move into membership uh, renewals and new applications real quick. Um, according to our treasurer, we had one new member and a renewal uh, come in. Uh, the the prorated new member is Clement. Okay, I'm not even going to. I apologize. Does anybody have Ojibokey. that name? Ojiboki. Ojiboki. Okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that because I was not going to do do that correctly. And then our our, our president himself, uh, Jim <laughs> Martin, uh, is uh, submitting his renewal as well. Uh, I would submit to the board that we should approve the both our new members and our renewals. I make a motion that we accept the new members. The members. Right. 
Seconded by Perry. So motion to approve and accept new and renewals memberships uh, made by Mike and seconded by Perry. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. That motion passes. All right, uh, Jim, we'll uh, turn the floor over to you and move into the treasurer's report. And I'll move down a slide and hope we make it a little easier for you. All right, I appreciate that. All right, so not a lot of uh, activity in our account this month, but that's okay. Uh, we started out the month with $20,957.08. Sorry. <laughs> I'm having a hard time seeing on my screen. Um, in our in our checking account, we had uh, forty dollars deposited. That includes uh, one individual renewal, one prorated new member, and uh, uh, ten dollars carried over from last month for a um, for a prorated new member. Uh, so forty dollars in received funds. We had one check written in the amount of $312.38 to Mr. Lowenthal for a reimbursement of expenses for the Huntsville bus trip. So that uh, okay. brings us to an ending balance of $20,684.70. I'm sorry, is there are you saying something? Is there a question? No, sir. Okay, okay. Sorry, I thought I heard something. All right, so. Um, that's our, our accounts looking good. Um, like I said, not a whole lot of activity there, but we, uh, we do continue to grow in the area of our, um, CDs. We have one that's coming up in November and another one in January. I remember correctly. Yes. Um, so, uh, as stated last month, I, I will gather, uh, information about what uh, rates are available and what terms are for those, and we can discuss uh, you know what we want to do with our with our current CDs, especially the one that's coming up at the end of uh, November. Um, I did look at our. I'm sorry. Before I go on, um, any questions regarding our checking account or uh, or the certificates of deposit? Okay, hearing none. Go on. All right. Um, uh, hearing hearing no uh, questions, I would entertain. Yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say um, I was reviewing our budget for this year, and just seeing like where we stood. I know that we only budgeted uh, two thousand dollars for repeater system upgrades, and we've already had um, one check for four hundred and six dollars. So we have we have almost sixteen hundred dollars um, still left in the budget for that. Although, uh, you know, it was mentioned at our last meeting that we would have to come back with, um, with a, would likely come back with a revised or, or an amended uh, amount to cover some of the uh, upcoming upgrades or uh, correct or fixes that we need to do. But we can uh, discuss that later on. Um, I just want to let everybody know that, that that was where we stood with, um, with our current budget. Uh, we do have a couple of items coming up uh, in November and December that I will have to pay for, such as uh, insurance, uh, both liability and equipment insurance, uh, as well as our uh, renewal of the post office box. Uh, Sarah membership, I need to check on that because I think last year we paid for two years so we might be good for another year on that without having to, um, to pay another $35. And um, and then we have the uh, door prizes for, or the prizes for the uh, elections in November. And uh, we did budget yeah, $500 we have, we'll, for that. We'll, yeah, we'll talk about that a little more in depth in just a few minutes. Okay. And so I, I was um, going to... Uh, Take a, take a look at that uh, at uh, Amazon because I know that there's a, another Prime Day coming up. So that might be a good opportunity. I'm open to any suggestions from anybody 
you know, to how we'd like to handle um, prizes and what types of prizes. So, okay, but we can certainly discuss that. We, we will be going over that. Yeah, well, we can. I've got a couple ideas that I can throw out there, and we'll just listen to the so and solicit some ideas from everyone on the board, and we'll put together our list and uh, go forth. Um, a couple of quick questions, uh, uh, observations. Thank you for looking at the budget. Uh, we are coming into that season where, if I remember correctly, we need to have our budget. So, uh, in November, we kind of draft our budget and we present that budget in December and then we approve and publish it. So if we could start as a board, start thinking about, okay, what would you want to change in the budget? If we need to change anything in the budget, kind of think about that, go back to your Sparks issues and pull the old budget up and kind of review that and look at that. And let's plan on having a discussion around that at the November board meeting uh, so that we can um, uh, kind of have a working discussion around that for November. If you could put the, if everybody could put that on their uh, November agenda, I surely would appreciate that. Um, any questions on that? Just kind of a, I have a question about the tax exempt status. Okay, so I did get a letter back from the state stating yep. that uh, they need a copy of our federal exemption, the 501c3, um, for the, uh, the determination letter, which I attempted to get that before. And every time I call this, I don't even have the number, like it sits here on top of my on top of my PC, the number to you know, the IRS helpline prompts one, two, and four uh, to find out how we get a copy of this determination letter. There, there's I cannot find anything on their website as to how to request it other than for me to to call them. And every time I get to that prompt or any of the, or I've tried other prompts, it comes up with a you know. Nobody's available to uh, take your call at this time. You know, please try again later. It's very frustrating. So I ended up sending the state our copy of the um, our copy of our 2023. Oh, sorry, yeah, 2023 tax filing, um, indicating that we are a nonprofit and a copy of our nonprofit status from the IRS. You can do a, a search for our status. Included that with our application and they bounced it back that they, they want that official letter. Yeah, the attestate. So, so we don't have an attestation letter from the IRS yet. No, we I've I've never found one that we had, you know, from any time in the past. It's something that has to be requested. It's not something that from what I from what I've read online on the irs website is something that has to be requested and i think there is even a there's a fee for it but have not been able to get through to anybody to find out exactly how to request that um on a, so, on a I'll, note I'll continued I, I've, I've i've tried calling different times of the day and you know different days and it doesn't seem to matter i get the same Dead end. Okay. Um, I'll reach out to a couple of accountants that I know that are friends and ask if they have any advice and circle oh. back around with you, Jim, and see if they can okay. point us in a, a direction. I'd ask any of the board members out there as well. Um, if you know anyone that might be in that kind of line of, of uh, expertise, if you'd reach out to them and say, hey, we're kind of in a struggling situation. If you could give us any pointers, we sure would appreciate it. Uh, and just circle that back around to Jim. That should, would be appreciated. Uh, Jim would appreciate it, and the club would appreciate it. So, uh, any other discussion around that? Uh, you know, Paul is a CPA. Uh, do you think he could give us any help there, or was a CPA? I guess. I don't think he did nonprofits. Okay, I got you. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe I can reach out ahead. to uh, maybe I can reach out to one of the other clubs and see if if they have any uh, information if they've done the same thing. So 
I could reach out to treasurer or, or president of uh, Neshoba or uh, yeah, Neshoba would be uh, good. I think Roy, uh, Ray, Ray, excuse me, Ray Miller over at uh, MARA. Right. I think he's their current treasurer. He might be a good one to reach out to. Okay. Uh, Neshoba is definitely a good one. Um, we've got oh. some contacts over in so, uh, some Marion clubs that we might be able to leverage as well too. So we've got that's a good a good okay. to reach out to other clubs. So okay. I'll reach out to to those two clubs and you know get that started. See if they have some okay. advice. And I'll reach out to the a couple of the uh, accounting people that I know and ask them if, if there's any way to kind of grease that skid and what's the proper process of to try to expedite that. Um, do we have any bills that we need to present for payment, Jim? I have nothing at this time. Uh, I don't know if, uh, Scott, do you have any any recent purchases for um, refreshments? I, I think I have about, I, have, I bought some drinks, but uh, I haven't turned it in yet, so. Um, I just don't know until I pick up the uh, the stuff from Josh. So okay. I might have something this time. Okay. But Jim, okay. if you could, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you could, could you give me a running total of how much I've spent so far for the year? Yep. Yep. I started that. I'll, 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 uh, I'll send that to you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thanks, sir. Nope. All good. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate that. Jim, thank you. Any other uh, questions, uh, observations, or things that we need to have uh, Jim address? All right. Um, for meeting topics next uh, next week, uh, I know, uh, John, you reached out a little earlier and said our NWS presentation might be just a little uh, length, uh, kind of a little lengthier than normal. I think that fits well because we've got some additional time that we'll need to use for club business to kind of address election nominations and other club business that will need to be talked about at the membership meeting regarding some of the other things that we're going to be talking about and do business. So I think that it'll be okay for this particular month's meeting to have a single topic. Um, let's just remind our presenter if, uh, not to run, you know, let's not try to do a 40 minute presentation without kind of splitting it into pieces so that we don't. I have think it's going to be more people. like 20 to 30. Okay. And uh, all right, and he's presenting. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to uh, say, what was the exact is, topic? Uh, Sky Warren in 2024. It's the title. I will make sure to update, update that. And then I need to circle back around real quick because I forgot to make uh, in kind of the opening statement that I was talking about, forgot to mention, um, and I don't want to put Mike on the Harrison on the spot too much, but if we could get all of the board members that are going to be working on getting something into Sparks, um, if we could get that done as early as you can, um, Mike is going to uh, be at drill this weekend and probably is not going to get to come home from drill uh, is what it's looking like. So I might be pinch hitting for Mike to do get sparks rolled up and edited and sent out. So the earlier we can get that information in it would certainly be appreciated um, as quickly as possible. And I'd love to see articles from as many uh, of the board members as you would like to submit something. So if you got something, go ahead and submit it. Mike, I apologize. Did uh, you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, uh, still up in the air, but it uh, looks like uh, it's a good possibility we'll be deploying to East Tennessee oh. on Sunday. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, oh. it's uh, going to be a touch and go. So, But, yeah, I, if, I, if we don't deploy, I'll be happy to do it. It won't be until Monday probably that I'll be able to, but uh, we'll work it out. Well, Mike, uh, if you do stay safe, please, and uh, we'll just we'll stay in communication and we'll try to get it knocked out and we'll work through the um, the parts and pieces. And I just saw Adam drop out. 
Um, he had, he said he could probably stay until about seven o'clock and then he might have to go take care of his duties that he was working on. I'm going to have to drop off, but I will come back on. I probably won't drop all the way out. I'll probably just minimize my screen or whatever, but, uh, All right. Um, uh, Dan, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I'm going to move it, uh, that your repeater committee report into new business, because uh, there's probably going to be a little bit of a lengthy discussion around that. Um, so we'll move into that. Uh, we've already talked about our tax exempt certificate. Um, talked about Sparks. Perry, we've talked about the nomination committee briefly. Um, you've got uh, all of the slate. Is there any uh, any issues or concerns around the nomination slates that we need to kind of bring before the board that you feel we need to talk about? Yes, sir. We've looked at the qualification, the basic qualifications of all the candidates, basically the qualifications, the minimum qualifications are that they be a member in good standing of the club, meaning that their dues are current and paid, and also that they have attended at least six of the last 12 membership meetings. The entire slate uh, meets those qualifications, except for Tyler Henley, who's running for vice president. Tyler only joined the club uh, in the spring, and he had to miss two meetings this year uh, because he was actively uh, deployed in the military. So those were issues that I was going to bring up to the membership uh, next week at the meeting. But other than the issue with Tyler's uh, attendance at meetings, all of the other uh, candidates for uh, office for 2025 do meet those requirements. Thank you, sir. Um, I would uh, submit to the board that Tyler's service would actually, while he was in service, his meetings that he would miss would be stood in place meaning he would be marked as in attendance for those. Does anyone on the board have any comments around that? Do you want us to go ahead and make that as a motion, or do you want it? Um, I think as a board, we could certainly make that as a motion and, and, as, and a recommendation to our membership as well. And I think, Perry, yeah. that, does that bring him to? Yes, sir. He will I... have Yes, sir. If he had credit for those two meetings, then he would have his six by next month. Very good. I'm sorry, Mike, go ahead. No, I was going to say if we need, I'll, you know, I would make a motion to accept, uh, you know, his absences for service as. Uh, being in attendance. Mike dropped out. Mike just dropped away. I think the motion that Mike was making, uh, Mike was making a motion that uh, Tyler's absences from his board duties while he was in service to our country uh, should be marked as uh, in attendance in lieu of uh, the fact that he was at, uh, in active service. Uh, is there a second to that? Second. Uh, Seconded by Perry. All right. So the motion was that uh, Tyler's absence is why I was out. Uh, made by Mike, seconded by Perry, uh, would count as attendance. Uh, any opposed? Any all in favor of that? Please say aye. 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 All right. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Hearing none. All right. Uh, I think that's a fantastic thing, Perry. I think that we'll make that recommendation to the membership. Um, if I uh, I think that they'll support that and don't have any issues with that going forward. All right. Um, I'm, I'm saving item B because we're going to talk about it the most. So I'm trying to knock all the other stuff off for just a minute. Uh, Joe, can you bring us up on the Bluff City Blues real quick, please? Um, I won't be there. Uh, I've helped Mary Jean get some people to where I think she's got about eight or 10 people to work uh, Bluff City Blues bike ride on the 12th okay uh do we have a lead that's going to be the liaison between the mary, uh, mary jean. blues club mary, mary jean, jean very good is the lead okay 
Very excellent. I think that will go very smoothly then. They're going to use the 8-2 repeater, if I remember correctly. Affirmative. Very good. Um, do they need any support other than just uh, membership, letting the membership know and that it's going to be happening and trying to get any additional support? They're always looking for additional people. If nothing else, uh, they can double up at a, at a rest stop or uh, two people can be in a vehicle to help uh, on SAG. And, and it's good training for the, for coming to get it, get experience for the, for the next year. So anybody that wants to do it, contact Mary Jean. Okay. I will reach out to Mary Jean and see if she can put together an article for Sparks. Um, see if we can get that in as well. Any other questions on Bluff City Blues? All right. Um, let's talk about real quick. Uh, Jim had mentioned our prizes for our November meeting. We've got a $500 budget for that. Um, typical in the past, uh, I think we've just done a various. Uh, does anybody remember kind of the, the number of prizes that we end up getting? Last year, we had a, a couple of more because there were two AWRL coupons that I had uh, won at one of the uh, uh, flea market uh, groups that I, uh, I believe it was at Trenton Flea Market uh, last year. So that was two more than than uh, would be normal. But usually, I don't know, five or six. I think, uh, uh, Jim, you probably know better than I since you did the the searching yeah. and, and and sourcing of the of the products. I thought you yeah, did a good job I'm, last I'm, year. I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking for my uh my list of of <clears throat> items that I purchased. I want to say there were there were there were at least a dozen items. And okay. that's also including that you know somebody somebody donated a uh, a book, uh, a Bob Heil book, if I remember correctly. Can't remember who that was though. Uh Scott Adams, I believe. Uh, um, one of the things that I, I'd throw on the list just as a quick observation um, has every has anybody heard of chat radio? Yes. Yes. Um, they have a nice power pole crimp kit for like eighty nine dollars. Um, has a bunch of power poles and a crimper, and uh, I even think it has a bag. That might be a nice medium gift to get. Um, I don't know if we've done that in the past, but I'll throw that out there as an option. I think it's eighty nine ninety nine. It's actually cheaper than you can get it at PowerWorks. It's crazy. Uh, what are some of the other options we've done in the past? I, I think we've done a um, biennial battery or other battery, I think, in the past before. Uh, last year we had um, we had a couple uh, inexpensive uh, dual band handhelds. We had a couple of com uh, computer monitors from Costco. Um, <clears throat> we had a Nano VNA. Uh, uh, Monitor all front. Yeah. Okay. A, a tiny essay. Um, can't remember what else we had. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to find my list from last year. Okay. Yeah, I think a tiny essay and a uh, a nano VNA would all be good. Monitor's not a bad thing at all. Um. Do you want? To, we can circulate those kinds of. Uh, I mean, it's it's all budgeted. Uh, you can circulate a proposed list when you find your list and we can all kind of just chime in back by email and uh, address that that way and go forth, especially with the, the big deal prime day coming up, at, you know, 8th and the 9th on Amazon. That might be a great way to leverage that and extend value uh, with that savings. 
Does anybody else on the board have any observations or comments around kind of collecting our prize and letting our door prizes and letting Jim kind of run a list? That sounds good to me. Jim did a really good job last year. There was a wide variety of things and they all seem to be uh, good and exciting prizes to me. So I think Jim did an excellent job last year. Thanks. I like, I like spending money. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> Um, all right, one other thing, and then we're going to uh, two other things, and then we're going to circle back around to our uh, repeater discussion. Um, I know in December we present awards to club members. Um, we, we're not going to have to figure that out tonight. Uh, this is just a precursor of uh, kind of a heads up. Hey, everyone, uh, start thinking about who you might want to nominate. Um for those awards um, so we can talk about it next month in November and kind of put that out on the, uh, on the table. Uh, new, new ham of the year and ham of the year are the two primary ones. So new ham of the year. And what was the second one, Joe? Ham of the year. Ham of the year. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of others, weren't there, in the past? Or have there been others in the past? There's been an, uh, one other one done a number of years ago. I forgot. I, don't even know, I can't even remember what the title was. But uh, uh, if somebody's exceptional uh, benefiting the club, then... Uh, it can be given uh, out, but it's not every year. It's not an every year deal. And then okay. some presentation of some have uh, been given in past year certificates for uh, net control and training presenters of okay. uh, training. Yeah, I think it would be good to do a net control one as well. We've had some new net control operators that we might want to recognize. Do you typically recognize all of the net control operators that have served at that meeting? Yeah, I I, I, uh, I have acknowledged them and re read off a list uh, in the last couple of years. Okay. Do we? Do you typically get them or provide certificates for them? That's something we might do uh, or interested in doing. We did it for a while, and, and half of them really didn't care to have the wallpaper. It's just another piece of paper that gets handed out. Maybe a a, a new, uh, and some of them don't come to the meeting, so it gets wasted. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say waste it, but it just doesn't get presented. So uh, maybe we can do for the, the the new ones this year. Okay. All right, we can uh, we'll circle up on that. That's we'll, we'll have a little more in depth conversation around that next month. Uh, but uh, if everybody just kind of think about that, that sure would be helpful. So we're not having to kind of go get those the deer in the headlights look and go. Oh, we got to think about that. All right, um, Jim, uh, real quick, because I forgot to ask you, do we have any ad additional donation that we need to consider or should consider to the Memphis Baptist Theological Seminary? Or have we uh, kind of budgeted that up and uh, donated to them our appropriate uh, donations? thought that we had mentioned a, maybe another donation this year, uh, another small one, but I'm not sure if that was still, I mean, it, it would, I think it would take us outside of our, our budgeted uh, donation amount for meeting space. Uh, so it says a total of $300 that we budgeted for. Um, mm -hmm. I think, I think we had made some discussion around using some discretionary funds. I'm not sure. Anybody else remember we that? Could. We still have uh, we, discretionary funds if we want. 
Go ahead, Jerry. I remember the discretionary oh, funds talk. Okay. Also, it, it's not Memphis, it's Mid America Baptist Theological Seminary. I apologize. You are, you are correct, Joe. I apologize. I will correct that typo. Um, sorry about that. All right, so we we don't have to make that decision tonight. We can circle back around on that, and that can be kind of our at our December potluck. We can ask uh, uh, Randy, who is our Mid America sponsor, if he wants anyone there to come join us for a potluck and present it there. That seem agreeable to everyone. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, let's circle back around now to the uh, our our discussion around our uh, repeater, the DMR request that came up and we just discussed at the last membership meeting. Uh, Dan, I'm going to circle up and yield the floor to you for both your repeater committee report and repeater report and just. I, I yield the ball of wax to you. I didn't what? catch him off Somebody guard. say my name? No. Um, no, I'll, I'll start with the trivial stuff. Uh, went out. The um, APRS is offline and went out, uh, have not been able to get a hold of Oscar. So I just drove over there one day in the afternoon and went up there and the, everything was dark. The UPS was down, the power supply was down and it was hot. So I turned it off and took it with me, but I think it may have crowbarred because I took it back to the house and it worked fine. So another trip back out to Methodist North. Um, nothing's changed elsewhere. Um, let's see here. Can I do a share? Sorry, I didn't get this earlier. I got some of the, I got some of the information like leaving work. today so all right you should be able to share out now all right my um my local guy went dark on me he quit replying to me i've emailed him a couple of times i texted him as a follow-up uh, I don't know what's happened there. Um, so I went and contacted, uh, North Georgia communications. Uh, they are a ham friendly Motorola dealer. And, uh, so I gave them a call and they are a ham friendly Motorola dealer. Uh, they have a person that is dedicated to, as the uh, guy for hams and they've sold the hams before they have DMR repeaters and the power amplifiers in stock. And one thing that he mentioned and that I've seen is a lot of places do not have them in stock. They're kind of a uh, difficult to get, but North Georgia has them in stock. 3570 plus shipping for and a five year warranty. Uh, they do the, you know, they will also help you set up a Motorola account, which would be good for us so that we can download the programming software and any firmware updates we might need in the future. And so that is a good thing to do. They, they don't just, give you the repeater and say, here you are, leave me alone. They will also answer questions. Um, and I just took down the used price too. They have a used price of 29 
Uh, that is an item that is, they do an alignment and tune on it. Um, the UHF amplifier, 100 watt, it's something they recommend to. They saw a lot of this type of combos. Um, power input, 20 to 50 watt, new with warranty, 1895. And that's about uh, $350 more than when we were getting it from the local guy. But like I said, I can't, I can't get a hold of him. Um, they have a pre-owned for 1645, um, full factory check and tune done by the factory. And that's 1645. Okay. So that's my numbers. We can. Does that used price, that top one, does that include a five year warranty as well? No. I, I don't know what the warranty is on it. I'm assuming it's probably a, you know, a 30 or 60 day type thing. I, I, I'm not. I'll, I can get clarification on it, but. Um, is it so, going to be an alligator with the amplifier? Um, I don't think it's going to be one. Um, I, d I don't have a experience of putting amps. I would not go more than a hundred Watts. Of course. Um, mm -hmm. I know in the past, the repeater, I think the previous repeater may have been a hundred watt repeater. The old Bellevue. I'm not sure. Um, I have seen just with some of the random tests that I've done with the drive around, it seems that I can get in well, but I can't hear the repeater very well. Um, and I tried even from in Kyerville, my work office, I know I can key up the repeater, but it's almost not enough to trip my radio. So I don't think it will be. It needs just a little more oomph to get back up the coax and out the hill. So it sounds like, is that kind of an accurate statement? Yeah. And, and you'll, you'll have that with any case, but, um, the antenna on that is a DB 420, which is a pretty good antenna. Uh, it's a 450 to 470 antenna, but a they got it tuned to work on our side. So that's about 11 dB gain, and that'll help us a little bit. Uh, I have not talked much yet with uh, North Georgia. There's a possibility we can do a preamp on the tower. Um, I've got to ask him if it's possible to do a preamp on a single antenna. I know you can do it on a um, split site easily, but can you run a hundred Watts through it and also amplify receive? And that's what I have to find out. What about buying the used amplifier and put it on the existing and see how it does? That's also possible. Um, yeah, we. I, I do want to say we already have the membership has given us the members blessing 
to purchase an amplifier um, outside of uh, as an ex as an as an approved expense. So I do think that the the used amplifier does make good sense, and I think we could uh, proceed with that one because we are we have achieved uh, and presented that to the membership. And I apologize, I did not research that before the meeting. Perry, that was back in April or May, I think it was when we the membership approved that. I believe so. Um, so we the the amplifier has been approved by the membership for uh, club purchase. We just need to, as a board, come back and say, okay, that's the one we recommend. Whether we want, is it is it worth as a board for us to look at it and go, is it worth uh, two hundred and fifty dollars to have net new, brand new, or to have save that two hundred and fifty dollars um, and get a used amp? Um, uh, knowing that it's been tuned and recertified and we just could talk through that and go with that. And the, the other, the other factor in that is we may want to, or I would propose that the, we may want to pursue the used amplifier at this point in time in lieu of, and not wait for um, the tax certificate to come back. If we pursue the used one, as much as North we hate Georgia to pay might... taxes, we could, North Georgia might not be charging ta Tennessee tax. They might not. We don't know. We'd have to ask what they would need yeah. for that. But yeah, I've run into that uh, with the was... company. They don't charge tax at Maine Trading Company when they ship to Tennessee. So, well, okay. North Georgia might have an entity in Tennessee since it's North Georgia, to where then they would have to have sales tax. But the question is, is you know. Uh, we need to ask. Agreed. Yeah. And so we, we would need to have that kind of question prepared and ready for the membership meeting um, so that um, we can address that with the, the membership next week. Because we did commit to bringing, uh, as, a, as a collective, we did commit to bringing back to them some information and details around uh, the 443-700 repeater conversion to DMR. And then what other assessments anyway, Dan, I, are we going to have to get? I was going to say, I, I was going to yield back to Dan and say if he had anything else, I didn't mean to, to okay. usurp his conversation because I don't know if he was finished. Um, to the point, I think we'd have to have the repeater and then um, we would just, we would need to decide do we want to do a used repeater or a brand new repeater my personal opinion, since uh, I would be expressing this, I would say for the repeater itself, I think a, a brand new net new with five year warranty repeater is the uh, a good way to go for the repeater. And I think a, an amplifier that has been used and tested and still a, a producing appropriate power might be a good place to use uh, or put in place a, a used equipment set. That's my opinion. I, that's, I second that opinion. That's what I've been leaning to. The The amp is a simpler device. Um, I want full support on the repeater if I can. Well, the, the used one has a new, uh, uh, new warranty uh, warranty on it, right? Uh I can ask that question. I haven't. Okay, you say new with warranty. Oh, that's oh. the amplifier. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, yeah, the amplifier is new with warranty. This one does not say. And the okay. interesting thing, uh, we've got a the, one of the things that we might want to do, and um. I'm going to totally out of just floating this. Um, I know that the membership seemed eager to get this done and pursue this and move forward with this. Um, I don't know how quickly we want to pursue that or how we want to address. Um, the, uh, we, we've got a, the tax is going to be a, a question that we're going to have to get answered 
um, whether we, and how we want to address that. If, the, if they don't charge us tax, slam dunk. Let's go. Let's ask the the, the membership to. Uh, here's the above and beyond budget that we need the membership to approve as an expense. Um, and then I think there's uh, if we really wanted to to uh, connect and carry forward, Dan, I think we would have a, a hotspot type of connectivity. And I think we could probably. My thought on that would be we'd pass the hat and say, hey, everybody toss in a, a $5 bill or a $10 bill, and that'll cover the a hotspot fee for a, a period of time until we can get either something more permanent or something better figured out uh, just to address the, the need. And I don't mean to be carrying the, the opinion weight here. I uh, do want to make sure that everybody else voices there. So uh, everybody has something they want to chime in. Uh, John, you have any thoughts or Perry? I know Tyler's said a couple of things. Yeah, I mean, I I got no problem with the pass the hat for the hotspot. I mean, it's for nonprofits that's uh, ten dollars a month. So you know that's that's not a huge expense. I think we could easily easily cover a year's worth of expense just by passing the hat on that. Um, I'm fully on board with going with the used amp. Uh, but do agree that if we're going to, you know, the repeater's got a little more complexity to it and having that five-year warranty would uh, would be worth it. Yeah, but that's kind of where I was leaning. I agree with that, too. Um, I think that makes sense. I think we're saving money where we can, but we're still getting something, you know, that's been tested and that they'll stand behind, but with the repeater, I would want the five-year warranty and the support and the access to the account and so forth. So I would agree. I'd like with to that. see if there's a warranty with the used and uh, repeater. Okay, I, I'll ask that question. Okay, two questions: warranty and tax in Tennessee. Yep. <laughs> Understood. As to the hot spot, ten dollars a month is not that much, um, uh, you know. But if you want to pass around the hat, I would certainly participate in that too. Um, I don't know that anybody um, would cough at ten dollars a month, but I'd be happy to participate if we wanted to pass the hat. The the uh, to full transparency of why I was thinking of passing the hat. Um, I want to. I haven't had a chance to review the bylaw because when we when we when we basically would have to sign a contract for a hotspot, uh -huh. uh, we want to make sure we got uh, that. So what I was really thinking for the hotspot might end up happening is we, we just kind of work that as a we we get it and, and somebody signs for it and that turns in a. There's some little more to that because there's a uh, and a recurring monthly to it, and until we kind of find the need, show the need, prove the need uh, before we get the club on that hook. Let's just pass the hat and we'll do it that way. That's, that's what my thinking was, Perry, to your point. No, that sounds, that sounds good. And I would be more than happy to be a part of that. And I appreciate everything that Dan's um, been doing. This is a great thing and appreciate all that Dan's doing. Um, I do I also W4BS has a DMR ID. Um, I'm, I'm registered with radio ID. Um, I'm working on getting the repeater, um, address too. I just had to key in some more information for that. So we're, we're on our way. Yeah. It's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. Once uh, once that repeater's up and has a network connection, uh, pretty much you can figure everything from the Brandmeister side on it. You, there's very little you have to do on the repeater itself. Yeah, well, once you get all your, I call it Brandmeister IDs, then I have to go set up on Brandmeister and I have to set up passwords and all that. And then... And I've done this once with uh, Ty. We set up an SLR 5700 at um, one of the local shops. 
and you follow the brand Meister's directions on setting up a 5700 to the T and you're in. And then all from then on, all the talk group administrations done from the Brandmeister site. So one of the other fun things that I'd like for us to, as we explore this, let's try to find a couple of members, more than one or two or three or four, that are, would be willing to work with us to host maybe a, to start off with a weekly uh, DMR net, we can pick a night or a day or whatever day we want to run that so that we can try to drive some interest in that. Um, if we could ask somebody to kind of solicit the, a couple of members at the board, at the membership meeting next month, next week, that would be fantastic. Um, I'll try to remember to put that in the, the agenda, Tyler, for you. Um, uh, as well uh, so we can ask for that if we um, do this, any other if, oh, i'm sorry if we do a dmr net would it be in place of the 440 net or in addition to yeah that was my question too um you know that's a an excellent uh point there we could certainly have the 440 net uh, be replaced by a dmr net uh, but then what we lose there is we don't have a, a traditional 440 net for amateurs around the region to um, test out their 440 gear. Uh, it's something we should probably think about. I don't know how well the, the University of Memphis area repeaters heard in the metro area. Do we push the 440 net to the U of M repeater and then the DMR net takes the uh, uh, a new time slot? On, on a different day. Those are certainly things that we should probably ask our membership about. You know, they're they're kind of they kind of drove this conversation a little bit for us. We might want to reach out to them and say, okay, we're we've got all the details. Here's all the parts and pieces. And, and if anybody's not in agreement, but I think the board's in agreement here that this is the path we want to pursue. Um, we're recommending it to our membership. Uh, so with that being said, we'd want our membership to kind of tell us, okay, how can we best make it effective for our membership to use it? Any thoughts or comments on that? And Joe, you're our net manager, so ultimately, you know, I'm not, maybe not, you know what I mean. Uh, do you have any thoughts? Did you ask me, John? Yeah, yeah, Joe L. Yeah. If it's DMR, somebody else is going to have to do it. Okay. Sounds like we're going to have to give Mr. Lowenthal a DMR radio. No. <laughs> All right, I do want to make sure everybody's heard. Uh, so uh, pause as I'll put a couple yeah. of people. Mike, do you have anything you'd like to add? Not, nothing more than what's already been added. Thank you. Okay. Um, Scott, uh, any thoughts or uh, no thoughts? Comments you'd like to? No thoughts. Fair no. enough. So with with that, um, I'll go back to our agenda for just a second. Um, I would ask if uh, if 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 this would be a correct statement. And um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Joe. I think you're you're sharing the wrong screen. Oh, I am. What screen am I sharing? Yeah, just your desktop. All your passwords. No. Yeah, I had to change some passwords after the last uh, membership meeting. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is that the correct, that that the correct screen, Jim? When I went to that setup screen, but oh well. Yep. New business is back up. All right, I apologize. Zoom, zoom, oopsie. 
Uh, so what I was going to, what I was headed to say is I wanted to see if, if we as a board uh, feel that we are in a alignment and unanimous kind of approach that this is what we want to recommend to our membership. Um, with that kind of surmised as a, as a summary statement of, we feel that it is appropriate to recommend to our membership that a DMR repeater is a way that we feel to leverage new technologies for our 443-700 repeater. And to do that, it's an expense as that Dan has outlined uh, that the club is willing to bear. Uh, the repeater, the membership is our, the, excuse me, the amplifier, the, the membership has approved previously. Um, and it is our, it would be our recommendation to our membership uh, to prefer a new repeater and leverage a used amplifier and then for the hot spots activity, we'll put a, a jug in the middle of the room and ask everybody to toss in a couple of bucks to cover for a while. Would that be an accurate summation of what the board as a group feels collectively? Yeah, yeah I do have one question about the um, hot spot. I think you had said previously it was like a $250 item. I think the I believe that is a correct statement. Nope, I can't hear the you. monthly is ten bucks. Must have. Can't hear me. I wouldn't say uh, Joe, you were... I'm sorry. I had my volume. I hit my volume mute. What was the answer? Okay. So I do believe you're correct, uh, Dan. That the there is a hardware purchase, and that that is a a, a cost, and I we would need to uh, find out that cost. Um, I do believe that you're right. It was in the two hundred and fifty three hundred dollar range, and then the monthly service fee was uh, ten dollars a month. So I mean, we could go it one or two ways. The club could cover the reimbursement of the monthly service fee, and we could pass the hat to collect the hardware cost purchase, so we don't any more out. We can work that out however we think. I do want to circle back around to did that answer your question? Yeah. I do want to circle back to Joe and say, okay, Joe, uh, do you have reservations? I just I think we should use the uh, one before we say anything. We want to see if there's a warranty with the used repeater. Yep. I'll ask that. They've been responsive, so I should have that information by tomorrow. And I don't think it has to be unanimous. It can be a majority of the board. Sure. I totally agree. And and, and it, I wasn't looking at, that's really what I was headed for, Joe, to your point, was more of a majority. So thank you for clarifying that. And I think it's perfectly fine to clarify Dan by a, a circulated email um, tomorrow what they say on that. And then that gives us a, the ability to go forward as the as the recommendation of the board to the membership. That's really what I'm trying to coalesce here is what is the recommendation that the board as a majority wants to recommend to our membership so that we can stand all up there and say, hey, we all feel that this is a good path. All right, so um, what I would uh, like to entertain at this is just to kind of wrap this up would be um, let's entertain an, uh, a statement or a motion of, 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 of the kind of what the uh, what the board feels. And I think, Dan, what we've, we're hearing is we'd like to see if the used repeater carries any kind of warranty. So I think what we'd like to see is kind of a, something along the lines of uh, the board would like to recommend to the membership that we pursue a DMR repeater, whether that's preferably a used repeater with warranty. If the used repeater doesn't have warranty, then it is the preference that we would pursue a new repeater with the warranty uh, and that the amplifier that has been 
already approved for purchase would be a used amplifier that the board is comfortable with that. Did that summarize kind of the, the consensus correctly, board members? For me, yes. Okay. So what I'd like, since I technically don't get to make motions, just can I have somebody kind of coalesce that into a motion uh, that we carry to the membership and then we'll, we'll get just a... Uh, and if you if you don't have to yay it or nay it, if you feel like you want to abstain from it, that's fine. I just want to get an indication of, uh, from the board. I would like to make a motion that we pursue the acquisition and implementation of a DMR repeater and with the details contingent as to the status of warranty on a used one. Um, I would uh, would see uh, entertain an amendment that details the pricing that we would be looking at for that. I don't remember uh, which <laughs> one was around. Which I think Dan it was, it was twenty seven hundred. Uh, thirty five seventy oh, no, for the Motorola. Uh, the and amplifier. Then, yeah, for new amplifier, twenty nine ninety five for a used. Okay. And for the amplifier, it's eighteen ninety five new, sixteen forty five used. Okay. And there's two things that uh, so the amendment to that uh, John John has made a, a motion to uh, entertain and pursue implementing a DMR repeater for the club. Uh, with a preference being uh, a used repeater with warranty of, of uh, Dan, would you say that amount, please? Uh, are you saying preference if the there is the a warranty? Used. Yes, or the sir. repeater would be twenty nine ninety five. If that used repeater doesn't have a warranty, then we would prefer to see a, a new repeater, and that amount was thirty five seventy with a five year warranty. And then the amplifier was, uh, it, the board feels that a used amplifier is appropriate. And that amount was 1645. 1645. 1645. All right. So as, as long, long as they can ship tax with yeah. no tax. We got to work. We got to work through the tax issue. Yeah. I, um, oh, never mind. I'll talk about the tax issue in a minute. Don't want to interrupt our motion. Okay. All right. That was a long-winded repeat of the motion. Does anybody feel worthy of stepping up and seconding that? Can I make one more amendment? Absolutely. I did like what was mentioned earlier about the club feels, uh, the board feels that it's uh, an important technology and that it's something that's going to be uh, of interest and of uh, use to the club and to the ham radio community in the Memphis area. That is a valid point, Perry, and that did not make it back around. So appreciate you bringing that back up. I'm, I'm going to let you as the secretary sort all of that, uh, sort that out when you write the minutes. All right. Anybody want to second that? I will, as amended. All right. So motion made and amended, uh, seconded by Perry. Um, all in favor of that uh, a motion that we are going to present to our membership, please say aye. 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 All right. Fair enough. Any opposed? Any abstains? All right. With one abstention. All right. Thank you, everyone. I think it, it's going to be important for our membership. Yes, sir, Perry. I had one. Uh, I do not believe that we voted to accept the treasurer's report. I would make that motion. I second it. We are correct. Motion made and seconded to approve the treasurer's report as presented by Jim. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. 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 
Thank you, Perry. And I even had that on the agenda and completely missed it. Some of our parts are better than the, than each of us. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, uh, Dan, um, I would ask um, all of us as board members to help uh, support this um, going um, yeah, as a club so we can present this to our club membership. Uh, that's why I wanted to talk it through and make sure we, we don't have to be to Joe Lowenthal's point. We don't have to be in perfect consensus, uh, but there was a majority here. So uh, I did want to just carry that to the membership so that they see that the board is kind of uh, surrounding this as the board is in, in agreement. Um, Dan, you said you had a couple other things that you wanted to address. Oh, no, I was and just want to try to wrap us up. No, I was um, I was looking online at the beginning of the meeting about some of the uh, the tax attestation and uh, anything after 2014 is online and we're not online because we were um, we were um, before 2014 so. I can have my wife take a look at it too. She's tracks all kinds of bizarre stuff down for nonprofits. I just again, I'll reach out. Go ahead. Okay. Um so I got I just got an email back from the uh North Georgia. He says, wow, that uh, we, was quick. yeah, he's kind of a 24 seven kind of guy. Um, uh, we've never had one fail minimum of 90 days warranty. Typically they have one to two years, original warning remaining. We, we stand behind everything we sell. All the repeaters we have pre-owned have little use and we're in climate controlled environments. Okay. Does that change anyone's preference for new versus used? We'll still get Motorola online and all that with that repeater. So they'll still set us up as a Motorola customer. Even if we do pursue a used one? Yes. So I think if if I had to kind of summarize, I think there was a couple of people that were still leaning toward the new. But what we might have to do if we don't have the ability to sort out the tax situation, uh, we may have to to leverage the used repeater uh, in lieu of the tax situation until we can get that sorted out. Does that seem like a, a, a workable compromise to everyone? Yeah, that seems like a great idea to me that, you know, if we can go after the new um, with no sales tax and great, but if not, let's settle for the used. That way we can, it's still got some support, maybe not for five years, but I wonder if we could extend that warranty, pay extra for that warranty as well. That might be an option as well. All right, um, trying to be respectful of everybody's time. We got about 10 minutes left. I don't have anything else in the new business. Um, I apologize again that uh, um, Tyler will be taking care of the meeting for us on uh, next Tuesday. Um, I would ask everybody to kind of help him out with that and stand uh, and help him uh, and present this to the membership. Dan, I know you'll be right there with him. And I know all the board members will be right there with him to help with this. I think our our strong no committee is reports. going to be that... Uh, sorry. You got 10 minutes so we can run around the horn and, uh, and everybody can uh, provide any reports that they might have. I was, wasn't the, go ahead. Scott? We'll just go around the, the Brady Bunch board. Scott, you got anything? 
No, sir. I'm good. Thank you. All right, Jim. I have nothing additional. All right, Dan. Um, no, I don't have anything. All right, sir. John. Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing other than our program. So. All righty. Uh, Mike. Uh, no, I have nothing else. Uh, you know, I would uh, move forward without uh, planning on me being here because it looks like uh, I will be going for an extended period of time to East Tennessee. So um, just plan on me not being back for a while. All right. So I would, I would, to echo that, then I would please ask that everybody try to get their Sparks articles turned in. Uh, Mike's clued me in on all the parts and pieces, so I'll collect all the Sparks articles and try to get that worked out um, as quickly as we can, and we'll try to get that published on time. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. The, uh, Appreciate that. Yep, thank you. And I did send you the email list as well. I emailed that uh, Excel file to you that it has the most up-to-date email list. Okay. Very much Mike. appreciated that. I, I want to, Mike. I want to report on how well your go bag worked when you get back. You want it now? I can probably tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm packing right now. I, I'm going to fill every pocket with something. <laughs> well, there you go. Beef yeah. jerky. All right, well, uh, <laughs> beef jerky tastes like chicken. Uh, Joe, you got a, uh, can we get your, your training report? Uh, I am working on a general class to start the first week in November. I will not know whether we can use a Monday night or Thursday night at the Memphis Police Department Appling Farm Station until Thursday night. Uh, it'll be for five five sessions. Uh, if it's on Thursday night, uh, we will skip the 28th of, uh, which is Thanksgiving and go, uh, two, uh, sessions in, uh, December. If it's a Monday night, we'll do all Monday nights in, uh, November and one in, in, uh, December. And, uh, I don't have anything for, uh, extra but uh most likely we'll start the first part of january for an extra class on saturdays most likely all right i look forward to that let us know if you need general or extra instructors i know you've got a long list i'll be glad to help if it, or i'm sure other people would help as well okay thank you um perry I have nothing further, Mr. President, but I wanted to wish Mike well and thank him for his service to our state and to our country and uh, you know, just uh, hope for the best for him and come back soon. Absolutely. I would echo that for all of us as well. Yeah, thank Tyler? you. Yeah, Mike, please stay safe. Bye. Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Mike, stay safe out there. Uh, other than that, look forward to seeing everybody on Tuesday. And uh, no more comments. All right. Um, any other, we don't have any old business that I'm aware of. Does anybody know of any old business? All right. Um, that was, a, uh, I would ask. Parting comment that I always like to ask, you know, find somebody that you'd like to join the hobby and ask them to join our club. That would be the best gift we can get to our club is to ask someone to join us. And with that, um, I look forward to seeing uh, the everything on this. And Dan, I look for the updates on, via email. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, motion to adjourn by Perry and seconded by me, uh, Dan. Aye. All right, all in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 aye.
Thank you, everyone. Our meeting is adjourned.